Hey everybody, Jazzy here. Welcome to part four of my series of early game guides for beginners to Don't Starve Together. Today we're going to play through Winter, which is the first real hazardous season that you will experience. The major threat during this time is the cold. If your temperature drops too low, then you will start to take freezing damage, so you're going to want to maintain a high body temperature at all times. To me, the easiest way to manage the cold is with a thermal stone. It can be heated or chilled, as indicated by the stone's appearance. During winter, your goal is to keep the stone red as often as possible. If it goes from red to gray, then it loses durability. So when you see it turn yellow, try to get it to a heat source before it goes completely neutral. The easiest way to heat up a thermal stone is to light a tree on fire and just stand close to it until your character is close to overheating. The thermal stone should be at a very high temperature at that point and will stay red for a while before needing another charge. You can also heat it up at a campfire, a fire pit, scaled furnace, or dwarf star. If you are based near Dragonfly, then you can also heat them up at her lava pools. Now, if you want to go the clothing route, then your best option is a beefalo hat, which can be crafted at a science machine with eight wool and a beefalo horn. It has a very high insulation, so it will slow the decline of your body temperature. Staying warm like this will require less frequent heating than the thermal stone since the thermal stone needs constant recharging to not lose durability. But the disadvantage is that your head slot is taken for the entirety of winter, so no football helms for you. For that reason I generally go with recharging the thermal stone, but you'll see Wilson alternate between the two this winter. It should also be mentioned that Wilson with a full beard provides a lot of insulation, and combined with insulating clothing, Wilson can potentially go entire days without worrying about the cold. But for demonstration purposes, I will use the thermal stone here. I also like how it glows in the dark when fully charged, so I can just run around at night and not worry about light until the rock goes yellow. Now let's talk about winter food. Berry bushes are going to stop growing for the season, but most other food sources are still available. For meat, you can still hunt for koalas and fight pigmen, vault goats, and beefalo. For monster meat, you can hunt spiders in the forest. If you knock down a tier 3 den or kill a spider queen, then you can plant the den closer to your base, then, you know, revisit every day for fresh monster meat. In the dragonfly desert, you will get a few hound mounds which occasionally spawn hounds, and they can also be a very reliable source of monster meat. Hopefully you've made a birdcage by now so that you can turn excess meat into eggs and unlock the two egg recipes. Now birds will not drop seeds during winter. But if you've already done a bit of farming, then you likely have a handful of crop seeds, so feel free to keep farming. The plants that are in season during winter are asparagus, carrot, potato, pumpkin, and garlic. I mean, you can grow whatever you want, but these just grow the fastest. Pumpkins are very good for raw hunger, and cooked potatoes are awesome for health. Now for crockpot dishes, you can cook up meatballs for monster meat. If you mine the glaciers that spawn around pangol nests, then you can get a hold of lots of ice, which is a very efficient filler for meatballs. Any extra garlic or carrots you grow in farms can also be used as meatball filler, but the other winter crops restore plenty of hunger on their own. For healing, you're going to want to learn the pierogi recipe. One meat, one veggie, one egg, and one filler will restore 40 health. This lasts for a long time and is going to be one of your easiest healing options in winter. The veggies you can get from farms, but you can also pick mushrooms in the forest, cactus in the deserts, or leftover carrots in the starter biomes. You can also hit up the mushroom forest in the caves for tons of mushrooms. Because I'm Wilson, I'm going to be leaning a bit on bacon and eggs this winter. It's a good way of preserving my meat, and it gives Wilson a bit of extra hunger for being his favorite food. You can convert extra monster meat into eggs, and then you can make this plus pierogi for most of your food needs in winter. I've made a guide recently on other crockpot dishes that are important for a beginner to know if you want to check out all of your options. But for now let's get back to Wilson. I'm starting off this winter looking a little ragged from an unfortunate fire nettle in my garden so I'm trying to get Wilson healed up a bit. I had a pepper grow and honestly peppers have limited uses if you're not Warly. But one dish we can make with them is pepper poppers which only needs a meat and a pepper. I was actually trying to make some pierogi, but this is fine for now. We will make plenty of pierogi soon enough. Now one important thing to do in winter is hunt mac tusks. This is the main reason I base close to the biome containing three walrus camps. Mac tusk has two drops that we are looking to get, a walrus tusk and a tamashanter. They're not guaranteed to drop and you usually have to kill several mac tusks before both of them drop. 
So let's get started. The easiest way to kill him is to throw on some armor, run straight at him, and chase him away from the camp. After running far enough away, he'll just start walking back and you can easily kill him. He can't fire his blow darts if you keep close enough, so the key here is to just stay as close as possible. The ice hounds might bite you once or twice, but usually they'll lose interest as you chase Mac Tusk away. If they do follow you, then just wait until Mac Tusk starts walking home. Kill any ice hounds that chase you out, and then kill Mac Tusk. He's the real threat here, not the hounds. Now Wilson got very lucky and managed to get both drops after killing only two Mac Tusks. If you don't get them, then just come back in three days and the walruses will have respawned. Turns out the Yukus we left at one camp did kill one of the Ice Hounds, but I doubt it will be much more useful where it is now. The Tamashanter, in my opinion, is the absolute best hat for winter. It only provides half the insulation as a beefalo hat, so you're not going to be ditching the thermal stone. However, it restores a lot of sanity and in winter you lose more sanity due to the nights being longer. The Tam is probably the main reason why I avoid the Beeflo hat in most runs, but to each his own. The Walrus Tusk you will use to make a walking cane at your alchemy engine. This is a hand slot item that increases your walking speed by 25%, which is an enormous upgrade. It is arguably the most important item to get in winter, because you can get around the world much faster and winter is your only chance to grab it. So if you're far Farming, you're gonna want to make a couple extra ice boxes for storage of crops and seeds because with a variety of crops you can quickly run out of space in your fridge. I actually didn't pick a bunch of these crops on time and they rotted on the vine after four days. If it happens then sometimes it's better to just leave them in the plot and let them regrow. But I don't really need the extra crops so I'll just take the rot. I don't need them stressing out my other crops. The first farm I'd recommend getting started on is a pig farm. They are a great source of large meat and pig skin, respawn after 4 days, can help out with early hound waves, and can be hired to chop trees. So to get started, let's build a little bait pen. This will help to keep pigs out of their houses at night. As long as they spot it during the day, they will stay stuck on the pen at night. You can make a very simple pen out of fences and a door, both craftable at your alchemy engine. Then just drop a pig skin or other non-perishable bait inside. Around the bait pen, you can start to place your pig houses. If you've been hammering wild houses, then you'll have plenty of materials for a few. Then, as you collect more wood and rocks, you can build more houses and have larger harvests. I like killing the pigs on full moons because they will all turn into were pigs and drop tons of meat and pig butts. If you want to pick off a few early winter, then go for it, but I just make sure that they were all alive again for the full moon on night 31. Winter is a great time to gather resources to expand your base. While you're chopping trees, feel free to chop the dead ones because they can on tree guards. You're gonna want living logs for your shadow manipulators soon, so you might as well start hunting for tree guards now. Before then though, we need to make a prestahatitator, which will be your first magic station. This requires four live rabbits, so craft a trap and head to the savannah. Rabbits come out during the day, but you can also dig up the burrows if you're pressed for time. The burrows will respawn in summer, so you won't eradicate them. I like keeping the burrow though because you can place a trap right on their escape path. Every time you spook them, they'll first run back toward their burrow. So if you scare them, then quickly run away, they won't turn around once they realize you're blocking their escape. Anyways, once you catch four, you're good to go. Also, be sure to dig up any graves you come across. You're mainly looking for one blue and one red gem that you can refine into a purple gem, which will be required for your shadow manipulator. Any other trinkets you can gift to Pig King. So back at your alchemy engine, grab four boards, four rabbits, and your top hat that you saved and totally didn't let break. With these, you can build a prestahatitator. This will unlock the recipe for purple gems in the refine tab, so be sure to craft one of those. At this station, you can craft pan flutes from mandrakes and life-giving amulets from extra red gems. Once Wilson shaves when winter's done, he'll be able to craft a meat effigy with the beard hair. Now it's time to get ready for our first boss fight, and that is Deerclops. This boss spawns like clockwork at night on day 30. And before it comes, we want to prepare a little bit. First, go pick some cactus. Clops has a huge sanity drain, and you will likely be insane after the fight. 
Second, let's prepare some extra armor and healing. I'm gonna make two football helms and about five pierogi. Now, pre-build a sign and a campfire. Not a fire pit, a campfire. About halfway through day 30, you're gonna wanna get far away from your base. Clops destroy structures, so you don't want it smashing through your camp. Once you pick a spot to make your stand, place down your sign. This structure will bait Clops straight to you, and you'll get the board back after it breaks it. Once you start to hear the growls, place down your campfire and make a fresh handbat. Make sure your campfire is completely topped off. About a minute later, Klops should show up and smash your sign. Now you can start to attack. Try to get Klops right next to the campfire. It will help to keep you from getting frozen by the attack. Another thing that can help with the sanity loss is to take a step back after it stops walking towards you. This will put a bit of distance between you and the center of the aura, so you will lose sanity less rapidly. Now just keep attacking while keeping an eye on your health and armor. If your health gets too low, then eat a pierogi. But the faster you can kill, the more resources you'll save. Right here, I move to the other side of the campfire just to prevent this shadow hand from messing with my fire. Just another example of how this fight can get really messy the longer it goes on. But Deerclop should fall after a short amount of time, at which point you can heal up and restore your sanity. Congratulations, you killed your first boss. Please don't eat the eyeball. At this point, you can start to prepare for spring. Craft up your eyebrella, make sure all your structures are protected with lightning rods, and get some hound protection ready. But if you've made it to spring, then you're halfway through your first year in Don't Starve Together. I'll save the Wilson run in case we want to see him through the year, but for now, I think I'll wrap up the series. We're in a good spot resource-wise to push forward with the rest of the seasons and start expanding our base. So let me know in the comments if you have any other questions about your first autumn or winter. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.